Hi everybody, this video is going to run through some psychological interventions for um, this topic of healthy minds. Just a reminder that we have actually covered 90% of these before, but this is just going to be a brief overview plus some advantages and disadvantages of each of these interventions. So this is what we've covered already. Um, I'll try to put some links on the video so that you can go back and revisit your notes, but um, a lot of these will come from a range of different topics that we've covered so far this year. So CBT, we know that this tries to change, so challenge and change not only thoughts, but also really unhelpful behaviours associated with a mental disorder. And the advantages of CBT is that it really tries to address the, the issue holistically. So we often think of, of medication as sometimes being a band-aid. You know, it fixes the symptoms, but not really the underlying issues. CBT is what's really good for that, which is why they're often paired together. In some cases, it can be just as effective as medications. They find this with some mild cases of anxiety. It's also really great as a long-term strategy for trying to deal with mental health disorders. Now, from a disadvantage point of view, it doesn't address neurochemical imbalances. So if you've got someone who, um, for example, has an imbalance of serotonin, which is often an issue with people with depression, this isn't going to change that. So that needs to be addressed from a medication point of view. Now let's look at behaviour modification. We talked about this in our learning topic and this was applying operant conditioning to behaviour um, and trying to shape that behaviour to be more positive. Okay, so using operant conditioning there and reinforcement. So the steps here, you identify the bad behaviour, create your baseline, you choose a realistic goal to work towards. Uh, so for someone with social phobia, this might be being able to go to a party with lots of people and be very comfortable. Set up reinforcements with rules for rewards, so trying to break that down into reasonable steps that have rewards. Write a contract, start the program and reward the small steps along the way, and reduce those rewards over time. So um, this might be good for something like social phobia, and an advantage is that it does have a positive focus. Um, it's goal setting, which we know is a helpful strategy for uh, mental illness, and it also chunks what might be otherwise an overwhelming task into small pieces. Disadvantages here, again, isn't addressing any neurochemical imbalances, and it's not really suitable for extreme cases, because you can imagine that they're going to need a lot more assistance in doing something like this. And while this is a behaviour um, therapy, it might be more suited to a cognitive behaviour therapy approach. Now, systematic desensitization is another behavioral therapy approach, and this comes from our learning topic when we talked about um, it's the condition relaxation, so using classical conditioning to really try and eliminate and extinguish that fear response. So we know that we identify the fear and create a hierarchy. Um, the psychologist then teaches relaxation techniques and they move through the hierarchy, pairing the fear with the relaxation techniques until eventually that fear response is completely extinguished. An advantage is that it is effective in extinguishing fears. Disadvantage is, is that it may not un address those underlying beliefs or thoughts. Each fear has to be extinguished individually. So you'd imagine someone with social phobia, it isn't just one situation that they're afraid of, it's a whole range of different ones. And it may need to be used in conjunction with other medication, um, particularly for debilitating disorders. So again, it's not always um, a suitable approach for everybody. Assertiveness training we talked about um, as well earlier in the course, and this is that idea of standing up for yourself without impeaching the rights of others. So um, having a nice healthy balance, not being aggressive, but not being passive either. Now in this, a, a quick summary is the psychologist helps an individual examine problematic situations. So you can imagine for mental health, there would be a range of those depending on the disorder. Find better ways of responding and then practice those, practice those assertive communication techniques until they become automatic. An advantage of this, it is another positive approach and trying to teach skills that are going to be lifelong skills for people. A disadvantage, again, we're not addressing any underlying beliefs, thoughts or reasons for the difficulties that that person may be having. It's good for, as being part of CBT, but it's not going to be solely effective in treating disorders 
on its own. And again, it's not addressing any potential neurochemical imbalances. Now, coping strategies. So these are things like exercise, sleep, nutrition, daily activities, education, and social involvement. These are all great for leading a healthy life, for protecting against mental illness or relapse of mental illness. But disadvantages is that they're not going to really be enough to address immediate symptoms. They're also not going to address any underlying thoughts and emotions and feelings and beliefs. So they will be good in, in conjunction with other treatments. Okay, And again, it's not going to address neurochemical imbalances. So, so for someone who has quite a debilitating disorder, these strategies aren't going to be enough. Now, stress management therapy is... Um, again, great in terms of using it in conjunction with other therapies. Great for people who are experiencing high levels of stress that have that put them at significant risk for mental disorders. Um, and again, it could be things like problem-solving strategies, um, advice to change the situation, avoiding stresses by planning ahead, all of those great things we spoke about um, when we talked about stress. And these are great for overall lifestyle changes. And we know that stress is a risk factor. So again, we're trying to address that. However, like coping strategies, we're really not addressing the immediate symptoms or the underlying emotions or thoughts. So again, good to use in conjunction with other therapies. And it doesn't address the neurochemical imbalances. Now, medications. So this is what's often referred to as the Band-Aid solution. In extreme cases, they are often required um, particularly uh, for people who have a neurochemical imbalance. So we talk about antidepressants for people with depression. Um, this might be something like a serotonin reuptake inhibitor. And then for people with anxiety, you don't want to give them an antidepressant because that's going to make things worse for them. We want a relaxant. So something like a benzodiazepine. Now, advantages of these is that they're going to address those particularly nasty immediate symptoms, and they're great for conditions that are actually caused by an imbalance. Now, disadvantages, we know that these are not built to be long-term because they can become addictive, particularly benzodiazepine, and they really aren't addressing the underlying issues, whether they're thoughts and beliefs. Okay, so um, not so helpful for that point of view. Now, past exam questions. This is one from 2014. Worth two marks. So describe one limitation of using CBT as a treatment for depression. So pause here and take two minutes to answer this one. Next one is from 2016. And this was a bit of an odd question at the time because from our um, SACE outline, it says nothing about exercise. And this sometimes happens in exams where you get a question that you don't know the answer. And you have to try and apply your knowledge to this question. So it's really, it's an application style question rather than a knowledge question. So you get two marks for this one. And I have some ideas for you down the bottom here. So um, you may not have time to discuss this with your teacher in class. So um, there are some ideas down here for you. Now, last one here is from last year, so 2017. We have Jonathan, a phobia, and technically this could fit in learning or healthy minds. So again, it's knowing that knowledge doesn't exist in silos, that the whole course actually sits together as a whole. So in total, worth six marks, but what we're really looking at here is describing that intervention that could help Jonathan. So hopefully this has been helpful, everybody. Make sure that you are going back to your content throughout the year because, again, this isn't a complete study. This is a brief overview of what we have already studied. So I'll see you in class. Bye.